Well, good morning. All right. I'm going to start with just a few uh, pre-worship announcements, housekeeping things. Um, one, uh, we have a we have a couple signups in the back. Um, one is for worship volunteers, um, which uh, thank you for those of you who've been signing up. We've been doing pretty good. There's a couple gaps, especially on the 19th, um, which. Uh, is a good opportunity to remind you that on the 19th, we have two services that day. One is an evening service. Uh, we'll have a normal Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. In the evening at 6 o'clock, we have a longest night service, kind of a service of, of prayer and, and healing um, as we go into, uh, as we close down Advent and head towards the longest night of the, of the year. Um, so in addition for signing up to volunteer on some of those days, uh, make sure you uh, have that on your calendar if you're interested in that service. Uh, the other sign-up sheet that's back there is for Christmas Eve. Uh, again, we're taking RSVPs for that to, to keep our numbers uh, where, where we need them to, to hold services well. Um, if you haven't signed up online on the Sign Up Genius and you need a, a physical sheet, uh, it's there in the back. Um, please sign up uh, for Christmas Eve there. Uh, the third thing is uh, for, our, for our worship and, and gathering, our, our singing policies today, the, the COVID numbers uh, right now, covidactnow.org, um, has our daily cases per 100,000 at 85.9, which is very high. We haven't been this high since uh, 2020 when everything was completely locked down. Which, is, which tells us two things. One is a good thing, that we've, we've managed to uh, come up with some good practices to keep things that we don't need everything totally locked down um, to be at that same rate. But the other thing it tells us is it is really COVID out there, so uh, bundle up. Um, so do, do all, your, uh, all your precautions. Wash those hands, wear those masks, uh, try to avoid gatherings um, when you can. Um, your best prayers, advocacy, and diligence as we continue to fight this pandemic. Um, yeah, be careful out there. Um, so with that, our singing today will be limited. We'll let our, our singers uh, take that risk for us and, uh, and uh, sing in our hearts and our minds. Feel free to clap and dance along. That is a wonderful way to, to worship with your whole bodies as well. All right, that's my housekeeping things for today, I believe. So, welcome to worship at Halfway Creek Lutheran Church. We are in the season of Advent, and it's a season where we prepare for Christmas, a season that focuses on the hope and anticipation of God's kingdom coming right here for us and the child that is born in Bethlehem. And this year we're using a resource by author and pastor Adam Hamilton. It's called The Journey, Walking the Way to Bethlehem. And uh, as we use that, we learn about and dig anew into the days preceding Jesus' birth. This week our focus is on uh, the story around Joseph of Bethlehem. So may you find our time of worship and learning uh, together, journeying toward the manger at Bethlehem, enriching, uh, enlightening, and a space for God to, to touch your life this morning. Um, as you know, we, we celebrate Holy Communion here, and all are welcome to the table. No exceptions. If you're here, you're welcome. Uh, so if you had needed a kit on the way in and didn't get one, uh, raise your hand. We can have an usher help you or, or make your way back there before Communion. There are gluten-free elements available now. That's uh, fairly new since at least coming back from COVID, from what I know. So if you need gluten-free elements, those are available as well. Um, yeah, and if you're joining us digitally, perhaps you've set aside some bread and wine or grape juice uh, for use later in the service. Uh, we welcome your participation in that. Yeah, so thank you all for being here worshiping together today. Uh, I invite you to rise as we gather in God's name with our call to worship and the lighting of the Advent wreath. So join me in the call to worship. The time is almost here. The heavenly choir angels wait for its period to begin. Excitement is all around us. Prepare your hearts. The grace of God has come to us. Good news. Emmanuel, God with us, comes to us. 
for the coming of Christ our hope. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. May rise. And let us pray together. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and st <clears throat> a willing spirit. <clears throat> Open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Amen. Our holy gospel this morning is from Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they were living together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, was not willing to expose her to public disgrace, planned, and he planned to dismiss her quietly. But just as he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took Mary as his wife. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you, blessed Advent, as we continue our story walking the road to Bethlehem. Not much is told about Joseph of Bethlehem. He's not written down in any history, nor does he have any lines at all in the Gospels. If you read them, he says nothing. But even still, he does play an important role in Jesus' life. Joseph, Matthew tells us, was a righteous man. Now, I think Matthew puts that description in an odd spot, perhaps to make us consider what righteousness really means, something Jesus certainly does throughout his ministry and his confrontation with the temple leaders. Where Matthew writes of Joseph's righteousness, well, actually, that righteousness was going to lead him to cast Mary, and therefore Jesus, aside, even if quietly. But Joseph has another character trait going for him that God uses to save the story, and that resolves the tension of a righteous man being one who had cast aside a young woman and the Savior of the earth. Joseph of Bethlehem was a believer in dreams. He undoubtedly knew the stories of his ancestor, Joseph, son of Jacob, Israel, in the Old Testament. The one with the many colored coat. Do you remember that one? Joseph and the technicolored dream coat? That guy. Yeah. When Joseph of the Old Testament listened to and followed his dreams, and when he interpreted and believed the dreams of those around him, God used him for extraordinary things. God used him to preserve and multiply his people. Joseph of Bethlehem knew his Bible well. And he, like his namesake, was a believer of dreams. Matthew calls Joseph a righteous man. Joseph's true righteousness is in his obedience to the disruptive word of God that he experiences in his dreams. His true righteousness is that he believes even when the word is hard to believe. He believes, even when it's inconvenient. He chooses to believe Mary. He chooses to believe the child and the visions are, in fact, from God. He chooses to stay, to name Jesus, which is an act of adoption, and to keep believing those dreams. Even when his dreams led to fleeing as a refugee to Egypt while Herod sought Jesus' life. Even when they lead him going back, restarting again in Nazareth after Herod's out of the picture. Joseph is a humble worker, a carpenter, whose righteousness, even we could say his greatness, is in his servant nature caring for Mary, listening to God, protecting Jesus, and always ready to completely change directions whenever God calls him. Joseph's righteousness is in his desire to show mercy, to seek good for others, I imagine serving as best he can, as father, as carpenter, and of course listening even when the voice of God is disruptive, is a life-changing word. His righteousness is in choosing to believe the story of another, to believe what Mary said is true, to believe the messengers and his dreams, in choosing to believe and listen for God's direction in his life. 
He was a humble carpenter who didn't seek greatness, but yet showed himself to be great by serving others and serving God. Jesus once told his followers, the greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled and who humble themselves will be exalted. And he said, the least among you all, or the least among all of you is the greatest. Perhaps he was thinking of a lesson Joseph, the carpenter of Bethlehem, had taught him in his youth when he said this. It's pretty easy to see Mary in some of Jesus' most passionate preaching, but I wonder where we see Joseph. In Jesus' stories of merciful fathers to prodigal sons, is it his, in his addressing of God with the intimacy, Abba, Father? Or is it his lessons on greatness? Today we remember Joseph's role in bringing the kingdom of God into the world, that of the earthly father of Jesus, the Messiah. He helped raise the child that would teach the world of God's love, would die on a cross and rise from the dead so that we would know God's presence in our lives. Joseph was called to be a father of the Savior, the Savior who calls us as his body, the body of Christ, to keep showing and telling the world of God's presence and love. Blessed Advent as we consider Joseph of Bethlehem today. Save the day, but for now, dear Jesus. 
child of mine. Oh, my Jesus, sleep I invite you to rise, and we continue our service confessing our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew our strength and rekindle our zeal for your word and your work in this world and make of us the living answers to prayer for the sake of all whom you love. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us extend Christ's peace to all our neighbors beginning right here. Peace with you. The offering basket, of course, is located right in the middle on your way in and out, and many of you give online. As we prepare to come to God's table, we recognize that we bring all that we wish to have Jesus bless and transform and use for his mission and kingdom. So the gifts of offering, of our time, of our very selves, we gather them and we bring them now to the table where we encounter the God of hope and peace and joy and love in the bread and cup. 
I invite you to find your communion kit now, have that ready, and your, or your communion elements at home. And let us start, uh, uh, begin with our offering prayer. Join me in the offering prayer. Let us give thanks for God's generosity toward us. We offer these gifts in response to the word of hope you continue to speak. Allow us to hear your word that inspires us to give of ourselves for the sake of your beloved children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to hold those communion cups as we bless them together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, creator of all and source of all life, we praise you for the light which pierces our darkness. We look to the light of your Son, our Savior, to shine in our darkness and make us your children. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we wait in hope for his coming, send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine that we share. Strengthen our faith increase our hope and bring to birth in us and in the world the justice and joy of your son through him all glory and honor is yours almighty father with the holy spirit in your holy church both now and forever Amen. gathered into one by the holy spirit we pray as jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to Christ's banquet and feast on the gift of grace. We eat together that this, this is the body of Christ. It's given for you. We drink together the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Join me in prayer, our prayer after communion. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. All right, announcements are short again today. Uh, take a look at your bulletin and, of course, the e-news for all that's going on. Uh, kids, I believe Sunday school is about ready to start, so if you have to head off now, uh, with your parents' permission, go ahead and do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, quickly run after our sending song, I suppose. Our Advent series, The Journey Walking the Road to Bethlehem, continues right after worship um, with more fellowship and learning. Join us for a few minutes. We'll be done by 1030 when Sunday school is done. Uh, for a deeper look at this week's theme, as we follow along walking the road to Bethlehem. And next week, we get the story of Mary visiting Elizabeth, so come back again for that. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Receive the blessing. God, the creator who delights in you, Jesus, the savior who is born for you, and the life-giving spirit who shines on you, bless you and keep you in hope and in peace. Amen.
You are the body of Christ. Go now, fed and forgiven, to be signs of Christ coming into the world. Thanks be to God.